can use Power Apps to create a great experience for people who are using touch-first devices like tablets. And in most cases, if you want to capture information from someone who's using a touch device, the default of using the on-screen keyboard works really well. However, there are scenarios where either because of the aesthetic of your app or what you're trying to achieve with it, you don't want to use that default virtual keyboard experience. So in this video, I'm going to look at how you can create a keypad using Power Apps, which you can then use as an on-screen tool to capture information from your users. So this is the tool that we're going to be building. And you can see I just have a standard um, 10 digit keypad like you might find on a phone uh, and it's set up right now with the intention of capturing a phone number so if I put in 10 digits you can see that my number that I've put in appears over here if I make a mistake and I want to delete something I've got the ability to do that here and when I'm ready to submit it I can submit um, using this button here and you could obviously change around how this looks change this to icons if you wanted to um, And change the formatting of what you're seeing in this box here But let's take a look at how you would actually build this out so that you could have a keypad in one of your apps I hope you're enjoying this power apps tip if so Please do remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel So you'll see immediately the next time I release one So what I'm going to do is jump out of this screen and jump into a new screen and on this screen All I've got is one button that I've created already just so I've got it formatted the way that I want it and I've got this text box down here which is displaying how many digits I want to capture in case we want to change that um, so what we're going to do first is because it's rather cumbersome to go around and change the formatting of these boxes once you've created them I'm going to create one and then I'm going to copy that and I'm going to copy that functionality to different places. Now, if you were doing a lot of this, you could put some of the settings for these buttons in variables, which you then used in all of your buttons. But that's kind of outside the scope of what we're doing here. So um, if you want to build out a solution like that, I'll, I'll leave that to you to add that feature. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this button, which I've now set up to work the way that I want it to. It just highlights in blue when I go over it um, is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to create a button for zero. So this is going to be my my zero button and I want to make that text a little bit bigger. Let's make that say 30. Um, so that's a bit bigger on this screen and then just using this zero button and this backspace button I'm going to create all of the functionality that I need in this app So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a context variable that's going to hold my telephone number So I'm going to um, on the screen. I'm going to um, create something on the on visible property and I'm just going to create a context variable so to do that I'm going to put in update context and I'm going to call this variable var number um, and I'm just going to set that to be this now you will see that I've set this up despite me calling it a number I'm actually setting this up as a string and the reason that I'm setting this up as a string is I don't want to add and delete numbers from it. I want to be able to add numbers to it to create a string, which is my telephone number. So just bear in mind that you will be using string operators on this. So you want this to be a string. So now that I've got my um, context variable there, I'm going to create a, uh, a label here where I can see the number. Um, that I'm using so let's just insert that I'm going to put a text label in here Let's make that text a rather slight bigger um, And then we're going to make this a little bit bigger here And I'm going to put that the text in here is going to be var number So as we add to that you can see that appearing over here So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, uh, an on select action here to add my text to this variable. So 
So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to on select, I'm going to update context. And what you want to do is update the var number. And what we're going to do to update it is we're going to concatenate and we're going to take the existing var number and we're going to add on to that the text of this button. So I'm going to say text uh, self.text. And so what that's going to do is whatever this button has as its text, its text property is what it's showing on the button, is going to add that to my context variable of var number. So let's go ahead and make sure that works. I'm just going to hit the Alt key and activate this and you can see that I'm adding uh, my numbers here. So the next thing I want to do is to make this backspace work. So what I'm going to do with this is on select, uh, I'm going to want to remove the last uh, digit that I've added. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to update context again. So I'm modifying this variable. So the, uh, the variable that I want to edit and I've forgotten my curly brackets here, so I need to put that in. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the left property uh, or the left function, I should say, to take the text that's already there. So var number and the number of characters that I want is the existing length, so the length function of var number minus one. So it's going to take off the last one. So let's just close that, close this, and close that. And now if we activate this and hit this, we should see that we're removing something. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that this button is only available when there is data in this variable. Um, so if there's data here, and we want to make sure that this button is only available up until the point that the number of characters here is this number down here. So let's work on that one first. So what we're going to do to do that is we're going to use display mode. So what display mode um, allows you to do is to change whether that button is active or inactive, depending on what is going on elsewhere in your, uh, in your app. So by default, this is going to be in edit mode, which means that we can use it as a button. And, but if we were to change this to uh, display mode dot disabled, you can see immediately that changes and I can play my app, but I cannot do anything with this button. So we're going to use that ability to um, really validate what data we've got going into our variable here. So uh, we don't want this to be disabled. What we want is we want to put in an if uh, statement and what we're going to say is if the length of our variable is less than the number of digits that we want, um, then we want to make sure that this is active, else we want it to be inactive. So we're going to say if length of var number is less than and the uh, this down here is text input one one. So I'm going to say text input one one dot text. But I can't use this because I'm using a com I'm using a numeric comparison. So I'm going to have to use the value function. So to turn this into a uh, a numeric value. So if the length of var number is less than the value of the input text input one, then we're going to say that the display mode is edit. Or we're going to say that the display mode is disabled. So let's check that this works. So I'm going to activate my app, I'm going to keep pressing this. 
Okay, so I now should have 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There we go. So I've got the right number of characters there. And I can just test that perhaps by... Let's actually delete some of these. I'm going to play this again. I'm going to change this number to 8. And I'm going to do this again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There we go. So I've got 8 of them in there. Um, and that's being controlled by this here. So you don't have to have it as a phone number. You could have it as something else if you wanted to. Um, perhaps you have a, uh, a four-digit security code that you want someone to enter and you would just have four digits. Um, but using this, you can edit the number of digits that you want. So the next thing that I want is I only want this backspace key to be available if there's already data in here. So in that case, I'm going to need to uh, go into display mode my display mode property and so I'm going to say if the uh, length of var number is uh, greater than zero I guess in that case it's going to be display mode edit or it's otherwise it's going to be display mode dot disable um, and I think that should work for this case so let's just check that so I can delete 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 and then this is active so uh, yeah one two three four five six seven eight there we go we've got eight up here this becomes active okay so that seems to be working as we want so the next thing I'm going to do is just create a uh, an enter button. So I'm just going to paste this button over here and get this kind of set up in a grid the way that I want it. Uh, okay, so that looks like it's in the right spot. So I guess I can change this to, um, to that symbol or else you could put an icon in here. You could really do anything you wanted. If you wanted to put some kind of custom graphic on here, you, um, you could do. So you can design this whatever way you want. Um, so in this case, my on select, all I'm going to do is um, actually clear out this variable um, when I. So this button is going to be used to, to clear out the telephone number entirely. Um, but I want to think about when I want this to be active. So my display mode property, um, I'm going to make this that if the length of var number equals the value of text uh, input one one dot text, then in that case my display mode is going to be edit, or else my display mode is going to be disabled. So that should work as well. So let's see. So I put in my first character and my backspace becomes available I then go through and I add seven more so I now have an eight digit number here and because I have an eight digit number my enter key is available my backspace key is still available as well but as soon as I have eight I can't press on my number anymore I can't add any more numbers I need to remove one uh, to add one again or I need to press enter in which case that's going to clear out my variable so let's just X out of this and see how we create the other numbers. So what I'm going to do is copy this and I'm going to paste here and I'm just going to create my, my grid of buttons. And because I've set this up to use the self.text value on my on select, I can simply go through and change the text of the button and that should work for me. So let's go in and play this app. This time I'm going to go 78907890, and there we go, that's all working. So now we can go ahead and we know in theory that works, so we're going to copy those three and we're going to create two more rows of buttons. And play our app, let's just change this to 10 so it is a real telephone number. I'm going to go ahead and actually select both of these and I'm going to hide them as we don't need those anymore. I can go ahead and play my app. So let's just add a couple more. I'm going to clear out my variable. 
So when someone comes to your um, to your app, whether it's on a kiosk or it's a uh, a tablet or whatever you're you're doing with this, they they come along. They can put in their telephone number. So we're just going to do one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Everything is there. They can choose if they want to delete something or whether they submit it. They don't have the option of putting in anything else. An on-screen keyboard never appears. So the characters that you've given them are the characters that they can use. Um, and you could do this with anything. If you wanted to create your own QWERTY keyboard using this, you could do as well. Um, but you can see very quickly, we've created an on-screen replacement for that virtual keyboard um, that you could use very flexibly to keep the aesthetic of your app as you want it to be while also capturing the information that you want from your users. So hopefully that's been useful to you. I thought I would make this video as I was working on a project where I needed to use something like this a couple of weeks ago and I thought it might be a useful um, idea of a tool that other people could use in their apps. Um, so hopefully this is something that you can use. Uh, drop a comment below to let me know how you might use something like this or other approaches that you have to capture information in touch-based apps that aren't to do with using the virtual keyboard. Thank you so much for joining me today. Until next time, bye-bye.